Hey, I'm Dallas Austin, songwriter, producer, record label owner, um, music man. <laughs> I knew I was gonna be a record producer when I was little. My mom and dad had a party club in Columbus, Georgia. They would have bands come and play in there, like 70s bands and stuff. And so during the daytime, I would basically go play with all the equipment and DJ and all this stuff while my mom was doing books. And then my stepdad um, played guitar for James Brown. I would get up every morning and play guitar with him. And then from that point, I was probably in second or third grade then, but then from that point, I was just like, the music, it was just embedded in me, you know? But it was really just the start of this undying need to play music all day long at home and not pay attention to anything else. I feel like there was nothing else that existed except for music, period. You know, for me, it could be a kick drum or a hi-hat or, or one note, and then it ends up being the song and you kind of don't know where it's going until it's done. And then it's this magic thing that you only have this many notes, you know? Every song you ever heard was made between these 12 notes, so it's gonna be classical or rock or modern, but you only have this little window right here to make every song you ever heard. And so that to me becomes some form of magic. So right now I'm working on a, a remix for my new single featuring uh, Naz Tokyo and, and the great Junior Sanchez. Uh, it's called Money Ango. Now I'm just trying to give me more of a, a little more fun, tropical type remix to it. <laughs> Add a couple of Moombatone elements to it. See so with the underlying reggae tone up in it a little bit? Just a little bit. Then we really need some steel drums if we wanna make it feel, make it feel like I just got off the plane in the Bahamas, which I wish I could get off the plane in the Bahamas right now with a nice coconut drink. A lot of the legends I worked with, I couldn't believe I was working with them. Some of my most memorable ones, I mean, Michael Jackson would definitely be one for the, for the top rings. I spent like six months working on the History Project with him. Um, Madonna was another one. Janet Jackson, um, it's one of my favorite people I ever worked with. It's been a, a great journey of people. TLC is all, all, obviously my favorite because we did, you know, we, we like family. I don't write songs and just send them to people like that. I kind of got to know who I'm working with or what you're going through or what's the problem at the time or you know, whatever it is. And so I, I like the excitement I get still when, you know, you get to work with somebody like that. So I'm, I, I like getting excited about um, the people I work with. If you're just getting started, if if you're not really obsessed with it, you know, then it's probably not for you. When it comes to music or when it comes to passion about anything, it's like you can't get enough of it ever. You can't sleep, you can't think, you can't, I mean, everything else means nothing to you at all. And um, that obsessiveness is what makes you great at it because you spend so many hours doing it. You have to know it inside of you to the fullest extent where there's no doubt about it. And then when you have that, don't stop. Just keep going, keep going, keep going, and it'll, it'll happen for you. When you get into the island mixes or like Caribbean or Mumbaton or reggaeton or anything, it's all about this, this little skip and the snare drums. And once you're there, you're already halfway reggae anyway, so. There's some other kick going on here. Then you can look at the 808. That's all everybody want anyway is 808. You know, if you don't have 808 in it. In 
the era we came up in, it was easy for you to um, overdo yourself because the a and people would want the same sound, you know? So they want to sound like the Neptunes and they're like, they want everything to sound like the Neptunes. And then even if they go to work with Britney Spears, they'll be like, well, we don't really care what the song sounds like, as long as it sounds like the Neptunes, you know? And that thing right there will wear you out after a while where people get tired of hearing your sound. And just like everything else, it gets to a point where, where it burns out. And even you burn out on it. You get burned out when putting your same sounds up. Um, and so you go through this dry spot. You go to a period where the a and r people is like, well, that's not happening right now. Max Martin's happening right now. So everything needs to be dance music and dance pop. So what does that leave a person like Pharrell, who's like, well, I'm not going to do dance pop music. And now you're going to say, what I do is not in, so I got to reinvent myself. So when a lot of the rap music in Atlanta you know, I had JT Money and then they started doing like the get lows and, uh, you know, drop down and bitch drop your ass and all this. And I'm like, I don't really know if I want to do that. So I think I'm going to do pop rock for a minute. So I started doing Pink and Gwen Stefani. Anything that was going to make it straight to pop radio and not sound like anything else that I've done, then I want to go do that. It's just all about not putting yourself in that box that makes you just go crazy and bored with yourself. And, you know, it's always inspiration and, and something else. So I feel like that is a big key to anybody that's had had longevity is they had to be able to reinvent themselves. Proper studio monitors are important and you wouldn't know it um, until you kind of done it for a minute. So it's about, you know, how, how accurate is the sound inside compared to when you take it outside. So a lot of times if your monitors aren't right, then what you're hearing in, 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 in the monitors and then when you take it somewhere else, it's like, hold on, that doesn't sound like what I was hearing at all in there. You know, so it's really important that your monitors relative to how you hear, they're really important to you, you know? They're really important to how your music comes out, how your mixes come out, how you, even when you're tracking vocals, you know, if you're thinking the sound in one way, and then you get to the car and they're muddy, and you're like, what happened? You know, my speakers didn't sound like that. So it's really, really important that your monitors are like, that you're in tune with them.